Hello, my name's Matt and welcome to my first video. Now, as the title suggests, this is going to be a series of videos of me designing and building my own exoskeleton. This is something I've always had an interest in and designed in my head. And now with the technology that's currently available, I think it's now possible to have a powered exoskeleton that one day could be armoured as well. Now, while this is my first video, I've not started from scratch at this point. I've designed and built my own lead braces. So over the course of this video, I'm going to go into how I've made them, how I designed them in the first place, some build techniques and why I've made them. I hope you enjoy this first video. So while normally these will be build videos from start to finish, as I've done the knee brace, I thought I may as well just show you the knee brace and show you my progress so far. These are knee braces that I wear to exercise in, particularly when I'm pushing myself, uh, probably about three times a week. I've run about 70 miles in my pair, I've squatted in them, deadlifting them regularly. I've walked up peaks in the Lake District with them, so I've worn them for a long period of time, so I'm pretty pleased with them. They are made out of aluminium, pressed into shape. They have a good range of movement. Going from straight to parallel, from straight out, they do also have a leg lock limit there to stop them going too far. They're powder coated for a strong finish with neoprene padding on the inside with velcro straps and neoprene pads. Now I did try more of a rigid strapping using aluminium and velcro straps but it just doesn't work, it's too much to nip you essentially. So I've stuck with velcro straps all positioned to grab the muscle groups equally so they don't slip down and it's worked really well. Now in the future when they eventually do get motorised I'll replace the hinge and have a motor on the centre, possibly with a gearbox. I'm thinking of having sensors similar to what's fitted to an e-bike to measure the torque input and the rotational input, but I will decide on this at a later date. So, future builds, like a boot that I'm currently designing. So the boot will go onto the bottom, it will attach onto the bottom of the knee brace, be adjustable, have a range of movement that's enough but not too much for an injury because even though this is all going to be part of an exoskeleton I do want it all to have a purpose and all to be worn individually if wanted. Same goes for the other side of the brace there'll be an extension on this end and then it'll go up to a hip joint and onto some form of belt where it'll then advance up through the spine and the rest of the skeleton. As you can probably tell by the stickers, this is my own company now, exodynamics.co.uk, where you can buy these if these if you have an injury or if you just want some. And as you probably guess, this is the Mark V, which shows how many different variations I've gone through, and in each mark there's been different production blocks to get it right. I've probably made about 10 different prototypes to get this right. I'm hoping to reduce that amount on the further on further builds, but we'll see. Now I've shown you the leg brace, I'll show you some build videos and it in action. So now I'm down at the workshop, this is just cutting out some plastic parts on the CNC route we've got. These in particular are plastic spacer parts that go between the hinges. And I found through testing that due to knees not being symmetrical on both sides, you either need a hinge that bends out or at minimum you need a spacer plate that goes either side. I've picked the spacer plate because at least then it's removable, because not everyone needs it. And I'd rather keep everything adjustable so they can fit other people, so it's not just tailored to me. Now onto the aluminium parts, just doing part of the hinge to show you all on this. The brilliant thing with the CNC router is, compared to the laser, I've found that they just don't need much cleaning up, so all you have to do is run around them a bit with a deburrer, drill, some wet and dry sandpaper, that's about it. I decided to pick aluminium because it's easy to form, it's easy to cut, it's easy to get hold of. It's also lightweight, pretty rugged even for a soft material. So I've slipped on rocks and I'm always scraping the bar against them and it's just not an issue. And of course, because it's gonna be part of an exoskeleton, if I need to thicken up the material to make it more rigid or stronger, or if I needed to change the material to say steel instead of aluminium, then I can just see and see it out of a different metal plate. And now onto some footage. The reason I wear them is a few years ago I tore a crucial ligament and it just never quite went back how I wanted it to not quite as capable as I used to be 
even after surgery. Stuff like sprinting, particularly on uneven ground, it were all just asking for another injury. And after looking at the different leg braces available, of which many had a broad spectrum of prices, I'm not really sure what to get. So I just decided to try and make my own. And as I've said before, I was interested in making my own exoskeleton anyway. So it kind of fit in. I am a big fan of other channels like Alex Lab and Hacksmith Industries. As Alex Lab said, one of the most challenging things about any powered exoskeleton, which I know he's doing an Ironman suit in particular, is the biomechanics of an exoskeleton and how complicated it is to essentially make it work with your body. I do think this is a challenging thing, which is also why I'm not too bothered about getting the electronic side set up quite yet. I think it's more important to get the whole skeleton done first and make sure it is all movable when you're wearing it. For example, every curve of the leg brace is there to allow muscle groups to work around and with the brace so you need room for your quadricep to expand when it's tensed you need room for calf muscle to move to move your achilles and i should think this will be the same for the rest of the exoskeleton there'll be a lot to work out and probably a lot of trial and error as i said before i'd have loved to do a proper build video for these knee braces and the first part of the exoskeleton is but really i didn't record any of the last year of making them and getting them right but i felt like documenting my progress so far would be a good place to start and lastly after editing this video i never realized how yorkshire I sound but i hope you enjoyed the video anyway if you did enjoy it please like and subscribe and any comments on what part of the exoskeleton build you'd like to see whether it was more testing or whether it was a build and any constructive criticism on how i can improve my videos please feel free to comment down below